Hey, I thought you were only interested in spaceships. Yeah, but I'm in the very room. Okay, we'll see what we can do about it. Hey, Akato. Well, if it isn't the lieutenant, aren't you a little off your beat? Oh, I got a day off. I'm giving Spike here a birthday party. Spike, this is Mr. Arcado. Who are you, Mr. Arcado? Hello, Sonny. Going to grow up and be a cop like your dad? No, I'm going to be the captain of a spaceship. Hey, now you got real ambition. What are you doing here? Fixing the races on the merry-go-round. <laughs> here you are, boy. Buy yourself a birthday present. No, thanks. I'm not allowed to take money. Just like your old man, huh? Sucker. It's okay. Hey, boss. You ought to see this kid ride the ponies. He's better than London. Well, hello there. Whose little boy are you? This is Johnny's voice. Great kid. What's well, so along, Lieutenant? Let's go, Johnny. Daddy, can I ride the horsey again? Why are you being so modest about that? I didn't know you had a kid. So what? You got a law against it or something? Yeah, but I didn't even know you had a wife. Take the kid home, will you? Sure, boss. I'm going to ride the pony again. Okay, honey, tomorrow. Come on, Danny. I'll take you home to Mom. Come on. You ought to be proud of a boy like that. What are you keeping a secret for? Don't outsmart yourself, Lieutenant. This is your day off, remember? Happy birthday, boy. Thanks, Mr. Arcado. Huh? Can I ride the merry-go-round now? All right. Here, buy yourself a ticket. I'll wait here for you. Oh, boy. Hi, Lieutenant. Everybody treating you right? Oh, fine, Jimmy. How's business? Well, no complaints. I run a clean show, you know. Yeah, I know. We were thinking of running Sunday services here. <laughs> you know better than that. Oh, honest, Lieutenant, she's terrific. Well, I can tell you some of the predictions Cut it out, that she's will you, Jimmy? The commissioner isn't issuing licenses for rackets, with or without ghosts. You got to close it up. Well, I give you my word of honor. She's on the level. You can talk to her yourself. Thanks. Maybe I will. Oh, uh, have you got a painter here? Yeah. Tell him to think up a new sign for this tent. Anybody home? Please be seated. No, thanks. I, I came to tell your fortune. I know. You want me to leave. But you want to be generous, and you are going to allow me until tomorrow night. Well, maybe I will sit down. Perhaps I am a fake. Most fortune tellers are. But in me runs gypsy blood. You see, my grandmother was a fortune teller. My great-grandmother. Suppose, just suppose, that I have a sense that enables me to know things that that haven't happened yet. Lady, you're breaking the law. Then I shall leave, of course. But first, let me give you a parting gift. You see, it is only glass. But glass is transparent. You can see through it. If you know how, you can see all the way into the future. Look, miss, I'm not in the mood for a fortune teller, really. You should not have come here today. From your point of view, I think you're right. You will bring misfortune to a blonde. Don't let my wife hear you say that. She's a brunette. Beware of danger. From a tiger. At noon. A tiger? Death is waiting for you. In the full moon. What? No fortune? No trip to faraway places? Oh, look, lady, be reasonable. I don't know any blondes. There isn't a loose tiger within 3,000 miles of here. And the moon? Well, I haven't checked on the moon lately, but... Death is close to you. Death is always close to me. That's why the taxpayers pay me thousands of dollars a week. There is no charge. Oh, thanks. I will see you tomorrow night. No, I'm afraid not. I'll send one of the boys around to see if the place is closed. I think you'll find it easier working some other time. Well, good luck with the crystal ball. You will come back.
Tony, what do you know about Danny Arcata? Well, just what you know. He's a graduate of Murder Incorporated. He runs half the vicious rackets in this town, and he's never seen the inside of a jail. Now, I'm talking about his personal life. Ever hear any rumblings about uh, Arcato being a family man? No. He has no family. That's what everybody thinks. What if I told you he had a wife and son stashed away? Well, that might be interesting. But, Lieutenant, why would he want to keep them hidden? Maybe Mrs. Arcato doesn't know about her husband. We've never been able to pin anything on him. He hasn't had any publicity. Maybe he doesn't want to have anybody asking a question. She might start putting two and two together. I was just thinking, if we put her on the right track, who knows? Things might suddenly add up. It'd put him in a vulnerable position. Lieutenant, uh, that's merely a lot of guesswork. His kid isn't guesswork. I saw him. And one of his torpedoes took him home to his mother. So Arcata's got a wife. It's a long shot. <laughs> he didn't want me to know it was his kid. Now we've always figured Danny Arcadio is a gay boy about town. No strings. And we've never been able to pin a girlfriend on him that we could question. He's outsmarted us. We've been on the wrong track. He's got a wife and he's too smart to lead us to her. Yeah, but how come we don't have a record of his marriage? I got a hunch about that. I think he was married out of the country. Communications. We're going to play Cupid. Oh, Kellogg. I want a cable police headquarters in uh, Mexico City, London, and Paris. Hello? Chris, just got a teletype from Mexico City. It's about Loverboy. I thought you'd want to hear about it right away. Read it. Daniel Arcado, married Cuanavaca. Civil ceremony, July 14, 1943. Bride, Helen Whitfield. American citizen. Address, 110 Elm Street. Plainville, New York. Regards, Chief of Police, Mexico City. Oh, good. I'll meet you in 20 minutes. Plainville, huh? Well, Chris, this is the place. Don't be disappointed if they never heard of it here. Remember, it's almost been 10 years. Listen, I was brought up in a small town. People don't move every 10 minutes like they do in the big cities. You're born in a house, you could live there all your life. I'll move to the big city. <laughs> yes? I'm sorry to disturb you, but I was hoping you could help us. We're looking for a girl called Helen Whitfield. Madam Whitfield. What is it you want to know about Helen? Well, I know she lived here a long time ago, but did you know her personally? She's my daughter. She's dead. I never want to hear her name again. You mean because she married Danny Arcato? He's a murderer. My baby. Married to a murderer. Then your daughter does know about him. Yes. That's probably why he doesn't want anybody near her. Do you have any idea of where your daughter's living now? In New York. How do you know? She writes to me. She keeps writing me, but I've never opened any of her letters. Not as long as she's living with him. Do you have these letters here? Yes. Could I see one of them? They're not to be opened. I won't open it, I promise. I just want to look at the envelope. Thanks. The Backman Arms. Mm -hmm. When did you last receive a letter from her? Yesterday. She keeps writing to me, but I never answer her. She has to be punished. Maybe. Mrs. Whitfield, it's none of my business, but it seems to me you've been punishing her for a long time. Yourself, too. Don't you think these letters might be worthwhile reading? 
Goodbye, Mr. McField. Goodbye. Before, Lieutenant, cheers it in. I mean, I tried to deliver a package this morning. Well, this is her room. Open it. <laughs> Look, now, if she gets mad, it's your responsibility. Don't worry about it. Just open it. Okay. Yes, Miss Whitfield? Yes, sir. Well, she ain't gonna be mad at anybody anymore. Chris, your hunch was lethal. Yeah. Either there was a leak about the teletypes we sent, or Arcado got scared when I learned about his wife and kid. Either way, she won't be much help to us now. It's not like Arcado leaving a trail like this behind. He really must have had his back against the wall. Who was in this apartment this morning? No one. No, no one came in or out. I was on the elevator all morning. This is going to ruin a hotel. Won't do her any good, either. Now, don't touch anything. Go over there and relax. Say, Chris, I just checked in the other room. The kid's gone. There's nothing in there except a couple of old toys. Yeah. You know, it's too bad. She doesn't look like his type at all. She looks real nice. I'll bet that's real blonde hair. Yeah. Somebody told me I was going to bring misfortune to a blonde. Say, Chris, we just matched these prints. They're Arcados, all right. You'll die when you hear where we found them. I die easy. Where? On the kids' toys in the other room. Funny, huh? Yeah, it's a million lives. How long did Mrs. Arcado live here? Oh, uh, she moved in about four years ago. I, I don't know, it was Mrs. Arcado. Until he came to visit her, huh? Yeah, until he came to visit her and the kid. He was pretty crazy about that kid. Yeah, the perfect family man. Okay, so you spotted him? Yeah. Look, he used to give me some extra money, you know, to kind of keep my eye on the kid. And during my lunch hour, I used to take him out for walks and things. As a matter of fact, I kept my eye on both the wife and him. Report any visitors? Wasn't anyone to report. What time was Arcado here this morning? He wasn't here. You're losing me. He wasn't here. Oh, I mean... look, what do you think this was, Benson? Suicide? No, sir. Then who was here this morning? I don't know. I mean, I don't know the guy's name. He was a... Uh, he was a guy, a friend of our Cato's. He used to come in here every once in a while with him. Well, what did he look like? He was about my height. A little, little fatter. And uh, wore glasses. What kind of glasses? Uh, horn rim glasses, black. Can I go now? Relax. That's the hood I saw him with at the carnival. Did you recognize him? Well, he called him Johnny. Must have been imported. We'll send out a general description. Okay. This man, uh, he took the kid with him, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's like I told you before. I, I thought it was all right. He came up every now and then. He's a friend of Arcado's. Yeah, and you thought he was an old friend of the family. Well, don't take any trips. I may want you. Yes, sir. Hi, right, Tommy. Chief's been trying to get in touch with you, Chris. Yeah, I know. Everything stopped in this Arcado business. I just left him. The governor called while I was there. Very impressive. Say, the boys are eager, aren't they? Well, you can't blame them. This is the first time Arcado's ever slipped. Hey, what's this, somebody's birthday? I don't know. It was on your desk when I came in. Say, Chris, how is it they say in the movies? This case will crack the town wide open. You know something to me, boy? It will. Hey, must be for Spike. Hey, that's cute. Gee, little tiger. Chris, I'm getting hungry. It's almost noon. Hey, you know, that's a good idea. With all this pressure, I almost forgot about food. 
Say, he is cute. Show me. Yeah? I'll try that. What? Your fellow basin of water. What's the matter with you? I'll get Peterson. Stand back. Yeah, right away. And don't slam the door. Okay. by an expert. That's a little. See, the wires were connected to the detonator. It's supposed to go off at 12 o'clock. The movement of the hands made contact with the wires. Yeah. Look, there's enough nitro in there to blow up a house. Chris, I owe you an apology. How'd you know about this? A tiger? No. Huh? What? Huh? Nothing. Tell me, do you happen to know when the next full moon's due? Well, no, I don't. Why? I just wonder. Huh? Well, see if you can dig up any identification on this. Yeah. Hey, Chris, uh, when we get through with this, shall I take home Spike? No, I almost did. Have them check it good. Okay. I'm going to knock off. I may not be back for a couple of days. You want company, Chris? No, but thanks. Chris, you're a wheel in the big department. Don't try to take them alone. Are you through? No. Getting our kettle is just a job. If you start taking it personally, you'll wind up dead. When somebody sends me a bomb, I wouldn't think of taking it personally. See you around. Say a word. Call police headquarters. Ask for Sergeant Toomey. Give him this address. Tell him you're calling for Kellogg. Tell him to get over here right away. Gotcha. Smarted yourself, Lieutenant. Like your wife? Yeah. You're gonna take my kid and leave me. Going to the police. After 15 years, she was gonna go to the police. That's no reason to kill her. Well, you got me all wrong. I didn't want to kill her. Just like I don't want to kill you. What's gonna happen to the kid now, Danny? Thanks for worrying about us, Lieutenant. We'll get along. Oh, by running away on a boat? You've got to land somewhere. You'll still be running away. What's his name, Danny? Same as mine. Danny Arcato. I bet he's proud of you. What's going to happen to him when you're picked up? He doesn't know who you are, does he? He'll never find out. You don't really believe that. Every day he gets older, he gets closer to the truth. In a few years, you won't be able to explain why you're running. When he finds out, he'll wish he were dead. You finished. You can still save yourself, Danny. I'll make you a deal. You've got a lot of guts, Lieutenant, but you're not going to be around long enough to make any deals. You give yourself up, and I'll see that he ever finds out who you are. I'll send him to his grandmother's. You'll have a good home. 
Good try, Lieutenant. Sorry, no deal. The car's ready. Well, then it's a deal, Arcado, huh? I'll see that he gets to his grandmother's. What is he talking about? Nothing. It's about little Danny. He's going to stay. Wait a minute. You said you were going to keep him with us. He was in the next room when I went to see your wife. He could identify me. I won't go for it, Danny. Don't be an idiot, Johnny. The boy is staying with us. How did he know about the kid's grandmother? He was just bluffing. Go wait in the car. I'll finish him. Okay. I'm sorry, Danny. Was it uh, Elm Street or Oak Street in Plainville? That was no bluff, you double-crosser. <laughs> Like this was going to happen. Yeah, I know. We'll talk about it later. Now let's make that phone call. for you. Hmm? Oh, I forgot. Well, I... I guess I'm here to thank you. But you're not quite sure. Not exactly. May I ask you a personal question? Yes. Are you married? No. Well, I was just thinking, your husband would have an awful time. <laughs> I mean, it'd be terrible to be married to somebody who could read your mind. <laughs> Perhaps it would all depend upon what was on your mind. <laughs> I guess so. You're still not sure about me? I wish I were. Don't you believe in miracles? Not this kind. The world is full of miracles. And full of coincidences. Perhaps it is too soon for you to learn. And you should read the Book of Fortune page by page, and not read ahead. Well, I guess I'll see you again. No, I'll be moving on, as you suggested. Oh, I'm sorry. Ah, excuse me. I want to get my fortune told. If you have a customer, I'll wait. Oh, I'm through. Oh, won't you sit down? Oh, I just adore fortune tellers. They tell you the most amazing things. Hey, you come here, Ducky. I want you to hear this, too. Now, go on. I want to hear just everything. Go on. You will bring misfortune to a blonde. <laughs> My sister, we hate each other. Beware of danger from a tiger. Oh, you dangerous tiger. <laughs> That's you, Angel. There will be trouble in the full moon. That's what my alimony comes due. You're marvelous. 